Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're here this Monday morning. Getting ready for a great week here on our favorite outdoor TV show. We're looking at the, today's high is going to be 87 and low be 74. And the water temperature is 88 at the end of the pier. Our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard and the hardworking crew, taking care of our everyday comfort needs. We're looking at our Monday moon forecast. We do every Monday, we like to do what, you know, just take a look at the moon and see what's going on. Got a full moon coming up on the 12th. That's coming up this Thursday. This is a really good week to be on to be outdoors. I'm gonna show you, let's take a look at the tide chart. Now our moon, our moon chart brought to us by uh, Mountain Dew, get out and do. Now tide chart, take a look at it folks. We're looking at, uh, it is it is uh, the whole week. I mean, today's the eighth. This is the best tides, from what I've looked at, this is the best tides we've had all summer long. Really strong, getting into uh, some really strong tidal flow, really big current moving. So just be aware of that. Now, tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Um, I'm just so uh, so impressed with the tide this week. So keep that in mind if you get out. It goes all the way through Saturday. So uh, keep checking it out if you get a chance to get out. Uh, after the time on it, the high tide is this morning at 6:24, and the low tide will be tonight at 6 o'clock. So it's going to be going out. It's going to be a strong current going out. All right. Wind's going to be coming out south southeast at about seven. All right. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, well, welcome back. In regards to Friday's video on the tarpon, the slides of the tarpon, I caught people, uh, I always want to know what size that was. I and mean, the captain and his wife were both so excited, and he just, I, I, well, I was very excited, but they were excited too. And the tarpon, he measured at six foot, and he estimated the weight to be 180 pounds. And he was so excited. And we went fishing on a Monday of that week and because on Saturday and Sunday they have a big tarpon tournament. They used to televise it. I had a great series of tarpon, tarpon tails or something out of Boca Grande. And, but he said that fish, the reason he was so excited, he said that fish would have won this weekend's tournament. And I said, well, can we go ahead and enter it? <laughs> but but uh, it was, that's how big, we were very blessed with, to, to catch that fish. And uh, I was glad we were able to. Let's, let's move on up to what's going on today, the, coming up this week. Uh, this coming Saturday, the ninth annual Dog Days of Summer. This is put on by the Southeastern Dog Hunters Association. Uh, it's going to be coming up, like I say, Saturday. Breakfast at 4.30 a.m. You got it, 4.30 a.m. now. Cast. This is when you get the dogs out at daylight. Wards at 1. Lunch from 12 to 1. Look at the lunch. Shrimp ball. Mullet plates. Then a raffle. Then all kinds of stuff for sale and registration and memberships. That's up in Milton. Okay, that, that is really exciting. There'll be some young people up there and there's some families, a lot of, a lot of good things. You hear those dogs run and, and uh, the dog days, that's literally the ninth annual dog days of summer, Southeastern Dog Hunters Association. And also what they do, that, you know, how they, they do a lot of good things. This is, in, go ahead, this is way down the road. This is in September, but go ahead and put it on your calendar. The same group, the Southeastern Dog Hunter Association and Michael Harris and the Seasons of Hope, they all do this. Uh, the cleanup will be September the 24th. Uh, it'll be at Apalachicola, Highway 12, Forest Road, and and uh, we'll talk more about it, but we'll, we'll try to get Michael to come on the show and talk about it. We'll put that on there September 24th. That's the same group of folks uh, along with Seasons of Hope, okay? All right, a couple of things, <laughs> Scott Kelly, this is a Photoshop here. I think he called it a, a bear, a bear elk, okay, a bear elk. And they said it's up in Point Washington. If you see it, just be aware of it. That's a good Photoshop, Scott Kelly. Okay, I ran across this and it sort of surprised me. What should you do if you see a beached marine mammal? Oh, number one, you know, you always just instinctively push them back in the water, but the FWC uh, says do not do that. Uh, and call their wildlife alert hotline, but I don't know how many of us have that on the phone. But right here at the bottom it says, pushing an animal back can cause injury, drowning, and delayed treatment. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what they're telling us to do. 
In fact, here's a picture of it. I, I would just think uh, you would just get them back in the water, but they're saying not to do that, okay? So let's pass that on along to just for your information. Mike Edwards, we're talking about feeding those crickets. A lot of people are interested in Mike's cricket farm, and Mike sent me a text because I wasn't sure what he's feeding them. And here it is right here, Purina, start and grow uh, little chicken pellets, okay? So if you got some crickets and want to feed them, if this is what this is what's in the paper place. I feed you crickets. Thank you, Mike Edwards, for passing that along. Good job on the cricket farm. I I post this before. I'm gonna post it on a regular basis. It's impossible to walk in the woods and be in a bad mood at the same time. That is so true, folks. That is so true. And let's see. One a couple other quick things. I'm talking about walking in the woods. That's what tied me into it. These are just all the hiking trails in the Florida Panhandle, starting way over. Other side of Apalachicola Forest, I'm not going to go over all of them, but this is part of the Florida Trail. All kind of, if you want to plan any kind of fall or winter walking, fall is a good time to get out of the woods, but they're all over the place, and a lot, of, a lot of folks don't realize we have that many here. Okay, and I, I, I pulled this picture out from last year, about this time last year. We're, this is our scalloping crew, uh, Bill and Donna, uh, Carl and Bill Perry and and uh, the whole group, Daryl and and uh, we a whole group. We're going to go down again this year. We're going to add another couple, and we're hoping we're hoping for the same results, aren't we, aren't we, fellas? Okay, so that takes care of our picture. I did want to uh, mention the scallop season right around the corner, and it's going to be. I don't know anything about it. I haven't been in the water doing any pre scouting. I hope to do some soon, and uh, we'll let you know just as soon as we and find out. Okay, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. On, on the way to the studio this morning, I, a rabbit ran across right out in my neighborhood. I, I've just seen a bunch of rabbits uh, this summer. And I got to thinking about it. To me, that's a, a nature sign telling me there's not a lot of predators in my big neighborhood. I got woods and everything around because uh, we've had coyotes there before. And we didn't have any rabbits. A couple of years ago, we had a lot of coyotes. In fact, I know that's what happened to, uh, to uh, Wendy uh, and Walter's little uh, puppy. Uh, that puppy would come to their house, from my house to their house and go back and forth. I'm 99% I'm sure a coyote got it because it just disappeared one day. So, but right now, we've got a lot of little rabbits. So if you've seen a lot of little rabbits running around, you probably don't have any coyotes around. So just a sign of nature. Uh, talking about another quick sign of nature, uh, you know, people uh, get in boats and, you know, we get in boats and go fishing and you're boating with the family and all, and some folks are just enjoying having a big party on boats, and it seems like there have be like been a lot more of that over the years, a lot more partying and maybe not as much fishing and just going out and doing stuff in nature. So anyway, over at Crab Island, as an example, someone posted this and they put some rules. Crab Island is over there by Destin, okay? We've talked about it before. Here's what, okay, do not swim beyond Crab Island. Stay on the island. The current is very dangerous. So this, that's good advice, number one. Number two, if you anchor on the edges of the island, do not go to the edge. It gets deep, okay? So don't step off. Number three, for everyone's safety, have someone get off the boat and pull it to your desired location once you're in shallow water. You wouldn't think you need instructions for that. Look for the white buoys that say no boats, okay? That's where I go. <laughs> And, uh, but you walk over that way. Don't, don't drive, what I say, don't drive your boats. Number five, if you choose to drive your boat to the island rather than getting a boat with a captain, watch out for anchor lines, okay? This could also be in St. Joe Bay. And number six, do not dive off your boat and into the water. Never dive anywhere off a boat, never, ever, anywhere, okay? Very deceiving, that's, that's good. Number seven, uh, right, let's go to the next page. Number seven is over here. This is one I just, okay, number seven. How about that? Just about everyone is drinking. The Florida sun is intense. Be mindful and don't let alcohol go to your head. Okay, so I uh, hate to see that. Number eight, for everyone's safety, leave glass bottles at home. Good idea. Number nine, go slow. Always go slow or idle. And number 10, if you walk around on a sandbar, watch out for anchors, okay? And, and then the last one, if you pull up another boat with small kids, uh, don't turn the radio up and play disrespectful music with foul language. So you wouldn't think uh, you wouldn't think you have to give that kind of advice to, to people, but that's just common sense in that. And you would hate to see that kind of stuff going on in our Florida panhandle nature. But it does. 
Uh, okay, speaking about doing some good wholesome things, I, while I was teaching, I was always working around a bunch of good coaches. I was blessed to work, work with really good people over my many years. And uh, I took this group, uh, in my later, uh, before I retired, I took this group of coaches down to, to go surf fishing. And uh, we just had a really good time. So uh, I, I was thinking about them this weekend. So let's go ahead and a uh, little seven minute video, then be right back after the video. So let's roll this, Jeff. Coach Perry Brown. What do you got there, Coach? I think I got me a big toe frog. Big toe frog. What he looks like right here. <laughs> Get him off. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is an end of the year coaches party. Got Steve Belcher here. We got joining us, Vern Barth, St. Joe head coach. Used to coach with all of us. Vern, glad you're with us. Glad to be here. Y'all been catching the fish down this way? Uh, a few. Sheephead, um, caught a nice flounder last weekend. All right. Vern used to be a Moser Dolphin as a St. Joe Shark. With Bill Graff back here, he, he already caught some fish. Coach Brown. That fish, hey, that fish looks, looks a little bit like you, Coach. I don't know. He had the legs on him, it'd be a good, good frog. Now, Coach, you used to freshwater fishing, aren't you? A lot of freshwater. I don't really know what this is, but if it had legs, it looked like a frog. Let's go check the other guys. They're all out here. They're out here surf fishing on Cape Sandblast. All right, look at here. Steve Belcher, famous art teacher from Mosley. What you got there, Steve? Uh, a little Spanish mackerel. Check it out. I don't know. He, uh, Spanish in the surf. He's been pretty hard. So what'd you catch him on? Well, a shrimp. Shrimp. Peel shrimp. Well, Peel shrimp. Got it. All right. Good job there. All right. All right. These fellas working hard surf fishing out here. That's Coach Jennings, Coach Williams, Coach Brown, Coach Ralph. End of the year, cool relaxation. Uh, Coach Brown got one coming in with us. I do. Have a good time. Check this out, folks. What a nice catfish. <laughs> You're doing good for a rookie. That's a big one. If it's fresh water, you right. That would be good eating. <laughs> what do you think about that, Vern? Check this out. Look at this little baby pompano. Coach Rye, what do you catch him on? I caught him on cut up shrimp on a two-hook two reel. There you go, buddy. Now, Coach Rye is, uh, is he going to be the head coach at uh, Carabelle? Well, actually, Franklin County. We're Franklin County High now. We're the Seahawks. So you you, you got him pumping. That's a nice. That's yep, yeah, the smallest just... one I've ever seen. We'll have to let him go. Yep. And Coach Barth, go. you're going to be playing Coach Barth, your friend. That's yeah, our, we, the Sharks and the Seahawks. That's our district right here. I, I'm going be flying high. Sweeping in. All right. He's going to chomp it right at the sky. Right. You got to be caught another day. Catch and release. Catch and release. Got a follow him. There you go. Those parts going for the redfish. Everybody set up here for surf fishing. Hey, look out right here. Coach Brown. Hot today, a double hitter. Look at that, folks. The skip jack. Hold on, hold on. All right, look at that. All right, now what's that? All right, we got the offensive line coach, or the defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator. There you go. Good job, fellas. <laughs> All right. What you got there, Tim? Got a big one right here, buddy. Nice wide. Nice people right there. <laughs> Tim's our athletic director at Mosley. All right. That's good eating now. Yeah, that's a wide. All right. Coach Graff, that is a nice wide right there, buddy. Yeah. Where'd you catch them on? 
fish. On shrimp. Yeah. That is a big whiting right there, folks. We're about to get a mess of whiting. Now, what are you guys doing over here? They told me everything I needed to know. <laughs> First shark fisherman I ever met. Oh, in the meantime, HD St. Joe, bringing in a whiting. Alright. It's how they get skunked. There we go. You That's gotta, it, you man. Gotta get <laughs> All right, go Jenny. All right, man. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What you got there, buddy? That was a pompa no. I, was, I wanted this mama, though. You got a baby, but yeah, you want... I got the baby. Oh, there you go. You wanted a mama. Yeah, I'm going to send it back home. Oh, let's drop him in the water. I'm going to show the folks how this baby swim. All right. Oh. All right, there you go. There he goes. Whoa. Boy, they take off now. Our coach is over here. They're waiting to bow up. Way down here, Coach Barr. Place, Cape Sand Blast, the St. Joseph Peninsula. That's a good picture. <laughs> yeah, here's the uh, teacher and the student. Uh -huh. <laughs> Get your lady under control, Perry. Tell that girl to chill. Tell that girl to be cool. Hey, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the little segment. You can see that's sort of what it's all about, getting out with some friends and just catching some fish and just having a good time and well, any drinking going on. We just had a, just had a really good, enjoyable time and we spent and night cooked. We didn't cook a lot of those fish, we caught. We had some other, some other fish with us. But uh, anyway, uh, let's take a look at our fishing game times today, brought to us by Blue Water Outrigger. It's been with us since day one. I really appreciate the folks down at Blue Water. We're looking at 8.23 to 10.23 this morning and this evening from 8.56 to 10.56. Again, I want to reiterate how important the tides are this week. They're going to be really, really strong. Now, let's uh, lead into tomorrow because tomorrow I have a whole video. And it's, it's interesting because it's the video of iCast that Gail and I were able to go to uh, uh, recently. And so it's all, all brand new stuff. But here's the deal. It, it's... Uh, uh, I normally, we normally spend at least two to three days down there in Orlando at ICAST. It's just overwhelming how, how big it is. You've seen it before. And this year, I, I really, and we, hadn't been, we haven't been since the pandemic. So we really hadn't, hadn't decided really to go. But then a situation came up where uh, after our family reunion, I realized our, my dad's 99-year-old cousin, Aunt Imogene, who lives in down in Vero Beach? Uh, she wasn't able to make it in, in, in a while, so I told Gail, I said, We're going to drive down and see Aunt Imogene. And we started piecing things together. We could put, we're close to Vero Beach, and here's Orlando, and, and it was the same, the same week. So, anyway, uh, things had worked out where we were supposed to go and do the previous week because I had a, I had a speaking engagement, uh, and, but I couldn't. The speaking engagement was changed to the ICAST week. So that threw me off. I planned to spend two to three a day and day or two in B Road, and then the whole time, the rest of the time, the rest of the week in Orlando. And it just so happened uh, that my speaking engagement was changed to my ICAST week. So we spent two hours at ICAST. On, on, so I, so we somehow got a whole video. It was just overwhelming to see. 
I wish we could have spent so much time there, uh, a lot more time than we did, but it, it's really good. And, and the great thing about ICAST, you just get around, it's, it's the world's biggest tackle show. And like I said, we hadn't been since the pandemic. We're able to, I, I quickly, I walked through everything really, really fast. But normally, if you remember in the past, I'd stop almost at every booth. And, and now, uh, the guys at Big Baits, they recognize me. Uh, I mean, Big Bites and also Fish Bites. Uh, uh, they would roll out the red carpet for me. They were so nice and everything because they realized uh, how, how helpful we had been to them in getting established up here in the Panhandle. So a lot of good folks. I, I always love the, the new product showcase. I'll show you some of that. Uh, if you go online and find out who, what companies won, the best product in each category. It, all, it had all kinds of different categories. I don't have that with me. I didn't go over it in a video. But you can go online, look at iCast, and then go down to each category and see which company won. A lot of inventive stuff. Every year I like to look at the inventions, what, what people just think about doing outdoors. So on tomorrow's video, it's going to be uh, iCast 2022 in Orlando that we spent uh, about two hours at but because we had to rush back up here for my speaking engagement. So. Y'all uh, enjoy. Y'all have a great day today. Enjoy beautiful outdoors and appreciate y'all. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.